the infamous capitalism build. So I've already made a pretty in-depth guide on this, so I'm not going to reiterate the same points. So here's the die loadout on screen as a quick reference. Instead, I wanted to take this opportunity to touch on some points that we never really covered in the original video, especially for those of you who gave it a go but didn't find much luck with it or complained that it was far too RNG. From the comments that I read, I find that many have a fundamental misunderstanding when it comes to this build, which really shows when you see comments saying stuff like, I wasted an hour fishing for the courier, I could have just run Remembrance and cleared it in 25 minutes. Well, here's the thing, if you can clear Conundrum 12 using Remembrance, then do it. It's simple as that. The strength of this build isn't that it's a fast way of clearing Conundrum 12, but rather its true power lies in the fact that it allows for those of you who have no chance of beating C12 to suddenly beat it. It enables underpowered, undergeared teams to have a standing chance of beating the hardest content in the game, and that's what I want to showcase with this video here. So I figured what better way to showcase this build than to take one of the lowest tier DPS characters in the game and put her in a hyper carry role where she has no sub DPS to depend on. So what we'll show here is a hyper carry hook team running the company time dice on Conundrum 12. She's going to be played on the path of destruction as a solo carry in a hyper carry team with Fushuan, Ruan Mei and Hua Hua. So I'm not going to speak too much on the specifics of what's happening in the actual video as it's really just a near perfect run in which we fish for the price of peace as our starting curio and then we get the gossip curio really early on and just ball out and buy everything. But that's the whole point. If you try to run the same team comp in any other dice or path, you're not going to even have close to the same experience. This build when done right is just so far ahead of every other strategy that it's not even funny. Be it Hook, Arlen, Physical MC, it really doesn't matter how bad the character is when you can just buy out every single blessing. So instead, while this plays out in the background, let's talk about your actual run and figure out how you can increase your chance of getting a good run with the strategy. I'll try to give some tips and tricks that I adhere to when I do my runs in order to maximize my chance of succeeding. Alright, so first let's talk about the Gossip Courier, as that seems to be the one thing that tends to make or break most runs. So, there are 53 Couriers in the transaction pool for Golden Gears, and this is after we remove all the negative Couriers and occurrence specific Couriers. So, the whole reason why we go inside transaction domains and buy out two Couriers each time is to reduce the pool down in order to increase our chance of finding the Gossip Courier. So, I figured that it might be of interest to you guys to see mathematically what the probability of us finding the Gossip Courier on our run is. So, when we step inside a transaction, Action, three couriers get revealed to us from a pool of 53. So if the gossip courier isn't one of these, let's assume that we then buy two couriers, thus reducing the pool by two. So this can be expressed mathematically as such. And then when we plot it out, this is the graph that we get with the probability of us finding the gossip courier on the y axis and the number of transactions we enter as the x axis. So yeah, with the data here, we can see that within six transactions, you're looking at roughly over 30% chance of finding the gossip. 10 transactions is about 50%. So from my experience, I actually found that the plain one boss is heavily weighted to reward you with the Gossip Curie as well, but I haven't taken that into account here, but you should definitely keep that in mind. So in terms of when it's too late to find the Gossip, well, that depends on how strong your team is. I personally have had success on C12 runs finding the Gossip as late as halfway through plane two. But ideally, you do want to get it from the plane one boss, if not earlier, or roughly three or so moves into plane two at worst. Alright, so on that note, another thing that I've noticed people saying is that they're unable to beat the plane one boss because they're so weak from not picking up blessings. So that's another thing that we need to talk about. As you move through the plane entering transactions, you should ideally be checking out the blessing stores just in case, just to catch any high value blessings. Enough to help you clear the plane one boss, which really is pretty easy, as they're just a tad harder than a normal elite enemy. So at this stage, I wouldn't just pick up any random blessing before finding the courier, but if I do see something like a disassociation blessing when I'm playing Remembrance, or any kind of high value multiplicative blessing, I'm definitely picking that up to ensure a smoother run. So yes, you should definitely be checking the blessings. You don't need to bank everything on couriers. If you're actively using your die rolls to generate money, you should be in a position to do this. Early on, time trade dice is amazing for this, as it's giving you 200 fragments every single time. Alrighty, so let's check back in on our little hook here. So we can see that she's cleared plane 1 with ease so far, and we're rocking 330% bonus damage from our destruction path bonus, and we're sitting on about 36 total blessings at the start of plane 2. So, at the moment, time trade is giving us 400 fragments per roll, and that's been our primary source of income throughout this run so far. But our courier breakdown in which the treasure face beats out time trade is going to be at 21 couriers and above, so we want to keep an eye out for that. And because this run doesn't really care about planar disarray, you really should be making the most out of your pathing by zigzagging as much as you can. 
This is not only going to give you more opportunities to roll more time trades and treasure faces to build your income, but it also allows you to hit more transactions and intra cognition domains along the way. Once you've got a good amount of transactions on the map, don't be afraid to use your cheats and rerolls to generate that income. Okay, so I'm going to skip forward a little bit to save you guys some time as this is just a boring section of me just buying out the shop every single time. But we can see here now that I've decided to buy the Fool's Mask just for laughs as it doesn't really matter anyway. Checking our blessing menu, we can see that we're now sitting at 74 total blessings as we approach the Plane 2 boss. So from here, we can see that I'm now using cheats to roll the treasure face, which gives me a huge 560 fragment injection. And then entering a transaction domain also gets me another 300, which easily allows me to buy the entire blessing store. Okay, so as we enter the Plane 2 boss fight, I'm rocking a few different powerful blessing combinations due to the sheer amount of blessings that we have access to. So we've got the Eurydition blessings for double ultimates for our team, a bunch of shields from destruction blessings combined with lots of quake damage. And I'm actually pretty surprised at how much quake is doing for a team that has no shielders. Then we also have a bunch of spore blessings which also gives quite a few nice nukes. For the boss itself, we've decided to go with Shepard for this fight and I'll just let it play out here with Hook doing a couple of million damage hits. Alrighty then, plane 3. So with plane 3 you load in onto a transaction domain which means that there won't be any other options to step on more transactions in this plane. So in my dice loadout I didn't actually have this die face but you do have the option to instead run the general dialectics face which lets us duplicate the current domain that we're standing on which then gives us more opportunities to get more transactions in. You do want to be careful though since we do run the risk of copying over our respite domain at the end there which will prevent us from upgrading all of our blessings. So if you don't have dialectics that's fine, there's still some pretty good options on plane 3D on things to duplicate here with the most consistent option being the intro cognition domains as it gives you one blessing, one courier and some fragments. And so with that let's check in on our little hook again. So we've ended the run on 91 blessings and you know what this isn't even close to the max that I've seen floating around here with some other people hitting up to about 140 blessings which is just insane. But yeah even with under 100 blessings let's see how fast we melt the plane 3 boss. Hopefully what I've covered here isn't just a total rehash of what's already been said before and that it's helped clear things up on how to better increase your chances of a successful capitalism run. I'll have my team's loadout at the end of the video here but for now I'll let you guys enjoy this fight with Hook absolutely demolishing the hardest content in the game. Yin 
and yang. Every petal in the all will be swept away by the wind. Protect it perfectly. Existence is unity. Converge and awaken. Human creations. <laughs> All things in the human creations. <laughs> Together as one. Thieves or devils? I'll crush them all. away by the wind. Yin and Yang! <laughs> 